We would like to move on to the final panel discussion. The theme is achieving SDGs. The significance of holding a expo is to achieve SDGs and also to go beyond the SDGs. The deadline of achieving SDGs is 2030. We only have six years until then. We are on a last spurt. So SDGs should be a, a, a catalyst for a leap forward. And uh, we would like to have opinions exchanged among the panelists. I would like to have the panelists on the stage, please. Please big, uh, give them a big round of applause, please. Please start. Please take your seat. So I'll introduce them one by one. First, panelists from Sumitomo Forestry, Executive Officer, General Manager of the Sustainable Department, Yu Koizuka. Thank you. From Japan Association for the 2025 World Exposition, Vice Chairman, Director, Senior Advisor, Usubi Sako. Thank you. Next, from Arctic Yuko Nagayama Associates, Founder, Yuko Nagayama. Thank you. And uh, last but not least, we have a facilitator from Keio University Graduate School of Media and Governance, Professor Norichika Kanie. Thank you. So I would like to pass the baton to the facilitator, Professor Kanie, please. Thank you for the introduction. My name is uh, Kanie, professor of uh, Keio University. Usually about SDGs, I do research, education, and others. But today, I uh, will serve as the moderator for this panel discussion. Thank you for the opportunity. So, I would like to briefly explain the panelists to you, as was just mentioned, 2025 uh, Japan Association for uh, the, well, the, uh, in preparation for the World Exposition, SDGs is uh, one major pillar. And so we have uh, panelists who are working very hard uh, in the uh, Expo and also the SDGs. So we have three people, Izuka-san, Sako-san, and Nagayama-san. Of course, uh, we have to talk about Expo, but other than that, toward 2030, what should do with uh, uh, SDGs? So SDGs should be a catalyst, uh, and uh, Expo can be a good uh, catalyst for SDGs promotion. So uh, first, uh, let me uh, set the scene for this uh, session or set the tone for this uh, panel discussion. Now, SDGs. Last year, in 2015, uh, well, uh, so uh, last year uh, we had a half time because it started in 2015 and we are going toward 2025. So at half time in soccer, uh, you, well, might uh, be able to achieve a, a major reversal if you uh, were losing in the first half. Now, last year, there was an SDG Summit of the United Nations and also a Global Sustainable Development Record. Uh, a report uh, uh, was uh, compiled uh, in four years, and including myself, uh, 15 uh, independent scientists were called on by the uh, Secretary General of the United Nations and uh, uh, formulated this report. And uh, now, what uh, the uh, progress rate of uh, at half time, uh, we achieved 15 percent. So it's, it was a 15 percent. So in the case of soccer, zero to five or zero to six, well, I would say would be very difficult uh, to achieve a major reversal in a way, but uh, in the first half, we had a pandemic. And also every year we were impacted by uh, the climate crisis or changes. And uh, recently we have been impacted by the wars. So uh, we now uh, see a different uh, phenomena uh, that are arising. 
uh, from before, before. But going forward, it is expected that uh, we will continue to see these kinds of events. So toward a major reversal after the halftime, uh, where like uh, uh, Mitoma uh, in the uh, World Cup, uh, are we going to have a game changer like him? Uh, how should we support a game changer? And when? Uh, so these are the things we'd like to think about uh, in this session. The recognition of SDGs, if you go out of this uh, Nikkei Hall, uh, the, uh, quite a few people wear this badge. The recognition rate is uh, more than 90%. Uh, so it's uh, quite uh, unprecedented. Uh, uh, it, it's great. But uh, when it comes to taking action, we're not really taking action, are we? So we have to fill the gap of this, which is very important. So to uh, fill the gap, we have to have a sense of urgency. But uh, unfortunately, uh, I, we don't see a very strong sense of urgency at this moment. I talked about climate change. Now, uh, compared with pre-Industrial Revolution days, 1.5 degrees or 2 uh, degrees, within the, that uh, well, uh, temperature, we have to uh, keep the uh, temperature rise within that. But uh, the, the currently, it's a one degree. So no matter how hard we work, uh, the uh, global temperature will inevitably rise. So it's going to be very, very hot uh, this summer, according to the forecast, but like uh, 37, 38 degrees in average in Tokyo, according to uh, meteorologists, I believe. But uh, it's just uh, the beginning. Well, this kind of uh, uh, world will emerge, and how should we respond to that? How should we reduce the temperature rise with respect to the uh, pattern of uh, consumption and production, the mass consumption, uh, mass uh, production? This pattern is still ongoing. And when it comes to gender equity, as in the process of uh, compiling the UN report, with things as they are, it takes uh, 300 years to achieve a complete uh, uh, equity between men and women. So uh, it's uh, completely if, well uh, distant from the uh, SDGs. So what should we do? In our report, what we said was uh, transformation is very important. And to achieve transformation, this S-curve model is something that we have to consider. Transformation, if you take a look at this uh, green line, well, we have a lot of roots. Uh, these represent technology with the expansion of these. Uh, across the uh, world, we can perhaps uh, achieve SDGs. However, there are a lot of uh, resistance forces, uh, so uh, they are not expanding globally. But uh, when you hit a certain point, it will increase, and the whole globe or whole Japan, the whole world, uh, whole region, this will be expanded. So we have uh, three stages in this model. So you see emergence, and uh, it accelerates, and then it stabilizes. So with the export, uh, if you apply this, then sustainable society, well, you see a variety of signs toward uh, the, uh, well, SDGs achievement. Uh, how can we see signs? And to link that to transformation, what should we do? Considering those, we have to move ahead. And to this, not just expo, but uh, how, what uh, should we make of what should happen in the future? So uh, we may come up with standards or uh, authentication or certification. The uh, cabinet office, the uh, uh, secretariat for the promotion of uh, the region of vitalization is working on it. And I am involved in uh, uh, the lab for XGG and uh, with uh, certification and authentication to spread this is very important. The, there are not many standards for sustainability. So in this connection, uh, the uh, system of authentication for challenge for the SDGs is what we are trying to do uh, as we have a discussion with the people with the cabinet office. So uh, going forward, how should we propagate this? Uh, we have to think about the phases for moving ahead. So uh, with that in mind, we would like to have a, a discussion in this uh, session. So. So these are the, some of the themes we would like to discuss as we push ahead. 
So, first, I would like to hear presentations from each of them uh, so that uh, uh, we will have uh, points for discussion. So, the top batter is uh, sitting next to me, Izuka san uh, from uh, Sumitomo Forestry. Please. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. I'm with the Sumitomo Forestry. I'm in charge of the uh, sustainability promotion. My name is Izuka. And by way of self-introduction, I'd like to introduce to you uh, what the Sumitomo Forestry does. The Sumitomo Forestry has been uh, established for 330 years, and in 1960, uh, 1691, during the Edo period, in the Nihama a city in the Ehime, the copper mine was discovered by the Sumitomo family, and the Edo government gave the family the right uh, to the mine, the copper, and uh, to work on uh, the refinery the, and uh, the infrastructure, and uh, the also to uh, uh, cut the trees around the, the copper mine uh, in order to uh, mine the, the copper the ores. Uh, all those rights were given uh, to the family by the, the Shogun of the government, and the residential, uh, excuse me, the forest um, the trees were cut down and uh, the mining uh, industry e evolved and uh, more resources will be necessary to burn and incinerate and uh, once into the major period uh, late 19th century the mountains were totally deforested so more than 130 years ago uh, they came up with the, the major reforestation plan so uh, this business uh, is uh, taking advantage of uh, the natural resources, but um, that, that uh, ended up uh, with the total deforestation, which was not good. So, uh, in a given year, uh, two million trees uh, at max were uh, replanted, and eventually the green mountains were re-established. So, that was about uh, sustainability. So, pursuing a business, uh, the short-term profit uh, should not be the only one. Uh, to be pursued, uh, they cut the trees, then uh, we need to reforest the, the mountains. Uh, that kind of a cycle will be necessary. That idea is imprinted into the, the DNAs of the Slimitomo forestry. So, the, uh, back in 1948, after World War II, the Slimitomo forestry was incorporated and uh, the company uh, owned mountains uh, and uh, as a trading house, uh, uh, the business uh, uh, the purchase uh, timbers and uh, housing um, uh, the business uh, use uh, lots of uh, the timbers so we also uh, began the business in the timbers in the US Australia and, and other overseas countries we have uh, the, the business these the sales uh, uh, a number of houses is uh, more numerous outside, and the biomass uh, power generations, uh, five of them, uh, are located in uh, Japan. And so, uh, mission treeing uh, 2030 uh, is our mission. So, what kind of a f future we're uh, envisioning? So, two years ago, we created a mission treeing 2030 in the making our planet safer and more secure uh, for future generations uh, that kind of a mission was established uh, and uh, uh, we're here uh, as a business corporation uh, i think uh, i'm the only panelist uh, uh, representing a, a business corporation but uh, how to achieve sdg uh, there has to be a system a mechanism say uh, the certification and a mechanism so we're here uh, as a corporation so we're thinking how uh, to achieve the SDGs. So we have identified nine important issues. Each of them is related to the SDGs. So we have identified the major challenges. For example, they enhance the value of the forests and the timbers by running management and the carbon neutrality achievement. Taking advantage of the forest and the timbers, our entities have a specific numerical target in order to achieve them, and. Uh, just to give you examples, uh, we have the, the wooden houses, uh, 9,000 wooden houses we build uh, per year. And uh, as a community uh, sensei said, uh, the earth is uh, 
uh, warming and how can we avoid that how can we cut the co2 emission the easiest to uh, understand is a zero energy house promotion so uh, when we promote the houses the the energy during a living uh, should be taken care of by the, the 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 energy storage cells or the solar panels so that the energy consumption should be cut to zero and the, the heat insulating and the energy con conservation have been promoted as a mechanism so uh, there's a corporate target and a business division targets and the different uh, branches uh, each uh, one of the the representative uh, has uh, his or her goal, goal. so uh, how, what percentage of the houses they sell that should be the zero energy houses we all have a target and when it comes to uh, global warming how to cut uh, the energy uh, during living is important and uh, besides that there's one other aspect when people live uh, there is energy involved, but um, how much uh, energy, how much CO2 emission occurs uh, before uh, the, the buildings are built? So that's uh, embodied carbon. So building a house, first of all, the, uh, the materials have to be prepared and uh, processed and transported and built into the buildings. So up to that step, the, the CO2 emission can be uh, decreased. And uh, when people live in the residentials, uh, there can be solar panels and other ways to cut the, the CO2 and the energy consumption. So we're trying to increase uh, the number of the zero um, uh, energy houses. And uh, when the trees grow as uh, raw materials, they absorb CO2 and uh, emit O2. It's just uh, photosynthesis uh, that you learned in science class in the grammar school. So housing uh, consumes a lot of the timbers. And uh, uh, timbers, uh, the, the uh, the wooden materials are actually about absorbing the CO2, so <clears throat> we're focusing on that as we try to shoot at the sustainability. And when we explain things to our the clients and when we explain things to the internal employees, I use this, the wood cycle, helping the achievement of the, the sustainability and uh, reducing um, the climate uh, crisis. So the forestry, the forest, that's the left. So we plant, grow the trees and cut them and use them. That's the cycle. And once the timbers are obtained, they're used to build the buildings. And when the buildings at the end of the life can be made into chips and made into the biomass to fuel power generation, that kind of a cycle can be repeated that's going to lead to sustainability world and uh, the co2 emission during a uh, living and the co2 emission during a building when it comes to that the greenhouse gases of the whole world uh, which is the the, the cause of the, the climate uh, a crisis about 40 percent of the gsg comes from the the construction industry perhaps uh, you think about the factories and uh, the chimneys but the construction sector emits lots of co2s so uh, cutting that is what we're shooting for so what kind of buildings should be built to look at the co2 emission and the easy to understand life cycle the good uh, wood cycle is communicated in Japan, and we're also uh, making the comparison um, of more um, the environmentally friendly the wooden materials by way of the eco label that you see at the one o'clock uh, location. We're trying hard in those regards. So, uh, Sumitomo Forestry builds the wooden houses, but uh, we do have non-residential wooden uh, structures and uh, an increasing number of uh, non-residential wooden structures are built. These are some of the, uh, the domestic examples, the uh, music halls and the uh, gymna uh, gymnastics hall. And on the right-hand side, uh, Melbourne, Australia, uh, back in the uh, 
uh, November uh, last year, the 15-story high-rise buildings were built uh, uh, out of wood. So in many different countries, large wooden structures have been built by us. It's catching a lot of attention. So forestry and wooden materials, we hope to make the very best use of wooden materials to contribute to SDGs. Thank you very much. That's all I have. Thank you very much. So, so that has been the basis of the, the discussion. So wood, the forest, the structures, how to go about the, the good cycle of them. So you mentioned the wood cycle, ma'am, and in Japan, that kind of wooden cycle, the wood cycle, is not so popular. Why? Well, the imported uh, material, wooden materials uh, represent 60% of uh, what we use in Japan and the forestry agency wants to uh, push it up to 50% uh, by 2025 um, and a few more uh, tons. So it's um, inefficient. However, we want to increase uh, the efficiency and we've been uh, talking about that topic with the municipalities. Okay, so by 2025, so by the year of uh, Osaka Expo, um, uh, the important materials should be cut to half. Okay, so let's go about uh, the next. We have Mr. Usubi Sako, Vice Chairman of Japan Association for the 2025 World Exposition. Hello, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As it was mentioned before, well, I'd like to say the same thing. For me, I'm in architecture, and also in the 1990s, I studied the architecture in environment, well, compatible with the environment, and I visited various countries like mine, and we are seeing the energy saving, but in other countries, they don't have sufficient energy so we need to think about the process more. Perhaps that is the SDGs. Well, no one is left behind. Everyone is equal and pursues the goals. So the issues have to be shared. And since then, well, in a space anthropology, I'm studying that focusing on the human, I think about the place, space, and architecture. And this is a village in Mali in such a place how should we think about the design design is a way of life so i study way of life and i'm thinking about the architecture with that today well, i'd like to talk about uh, sdgs and expos uh, and then africa how africa understands grasp that which is important uh, with uh, various perspectives we have to think about uh, well we shouldn't uh, left them behind uh, or africa if they are well going ahead to the direction they wish for well i'm checking that when i involve in my research so so i'm well uh, joining the team expo as a uh, university representatives now sdgs you know that but uh, this word is very important so i'd like to repeat uh, sdgs so no one is left behind on the earth so leave no one behind this is a key word so it's not just for myself, but everyone have to have to think about the commons, the earth, how to tackle the issues with everyone. That is important. Well, about Africa, I wrote that in here. Well, Africa is just a little bit ahead. Well, Africa, in the 2063, the Africa's new target is set with a deadline of 20, well, 63. And another thing is that about SDGs, I think the participation from Africa is very important because, well, we just think from afar, but our activities may impact at somewhere else. Well, at the exposi exposition, we can realize that and share that experience. And in uh, for the well, we are five years uh, we are before the the twenty thirties goal, and expo to be the last stage before the deadline of the SDGs. So we need to share various various information at expo, and we need to check our goals and have to think about that. 
with a new perspective. So including Africa, uh, with a lot of countries participating in the Expo, which is very important. So when Africa comes next to the Africa, what would Africa would like to want that have to be promoted. So Africa does not just follow the expectation of the others. Africa have to think about what they do like to do in the international stage. It's not just for the grants and the subsidies. The Africa have to uh, say what they do like to have. So in an era of the commons, what should we think about the Expo? I think the unique features of the uh, Expo will reside in the area in Kansai, Osaka area because uh, there's a history, people, business, uh, knowledge, and also innovations can be possible in this area. So we need to focus on that. And in order to have a growth, people will meet well incidentally in Osaka Expo. So for the young people from the earth, well, a lot of things can be learned at the expo, especially for young people. Another point is the diversity. Well, the race, gender, religion, sexual, ori orient sexual orientation, and social background, and different differences between individuals. Well, we have no difference. We do not need to be uh, well compatible with others. How should we think about the difference in a positive way? That is important. We need to change the mindset of a majority group. Now, we are thinking about the minority we are thinking about uh, minorities, but I think the majority is also important. Mindset of them have to be changed. Well, this is about the social scientist says that, uh, well, we have no separations, but when uh, people mix their cultures, well, we the different cultures we learn with each other. The cultures learn this thing. Yeah, so in this new situation, well, what do we think about the uh, future of the world and what is the role of young people? That is important. As I wrote that at the bottom of the slide, yeah, co-creation. How do we understand the meaning of co-creation? For the younger people, they do, they have to think about if it's possible to have a happiness for the everyone in the world and how to overcome the identity crisis era. So with the expo, well, well, I do not know the 1970s in Japan, but I think that the people say that it's a legacy that was good. But so we do like to give an opportunity for the young people to experience Expo. So in Expo project, well, I think the host town project, you know, that the Japanese municipalities, well, become friends of the well countries participating in expo more than 160 well countries and this host pro well, country project is started and one of them talks about this now with the well become become a friendly friend relationship with the countries who are participating uh, in the expo the local japanese communities can have a bond with them and my my republic my company uh, my country is now having a relationship friendly relationship with urahoro town in hokkaido tokachi city so host town relationship was being concluded in the model project and i visited urahoro city and uh, that is this is very important they have a uh, depopulation a lot uh, but uh, there are well the people in a young generation in their 20s are returning to this city and the young people create a uh, uh, town so town creation is very important uh, and urahoro towns model have to be transferred to africa because in africa there are a lot of young people the average age in mali is very young about 80% of the population in Mali is young generation. So how they can utilize the Urahoro model? This, well, we visited Urahoro last month and Urahoro Mari Fair has been done at that time. So I think that the co-creation can be shown by the expo and we are going to have a society where individual is the center. How can we do the co-creation? How we can have an identity? Well, how we can regain the identity uh, in a society and do the our background culture have to be an axis of the identity. So 
our culture has been brought in, and together we have to create an axis in a society. That is a co-creation society. And for that, dialogue is needed. Dialogue in culture, and that will be a target of the uh, expo. So through this dialogue, society will be created, co-created, and what is most important for us is that our idea, our voice, what we are, what I, I am, and with your voice, you have to have a relationship with others and you have to recognize yourself. I always say that to young people in my lecture that we have to raise questions. As a professor of a university, I always ask, well, teach young people to find the solutions like it's better to have a solutions but now people are losing the capability to raise questions what is important is that you shouldn't be afraid of the changing yourself and you have to raise questions uh, this is a proverb from africa if you want to go fast go alone if you want to go far go together so this is a sdgs itself i think that's all from me thank you very much Thank you. Well, a lot of keywords you mentioned, co-creation and various suggestions you made. And the last part of your presentation, you talked about the host town. We are going to talk about it later in our discussion but so far. Well, how many host towns have been decided so far? Well, this year. Well, 2023, FI 2023 as a model, about 10 host towns has been determined. But this year, the number will increase. So I think a lot of number, well, we are going to achieve. Perhaps the deadline for the host town proposal is now, well, near. We are talking about the regional revitalization. So if you are interested in that, you can apply for that. Please think about that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for waiting. I'd like to invite Yuko Nagayama to speak. My name is Nagayama, thank you very much. So today, I made some self-introduction as well. So how we are proceeding with the initiatives that I'd like to talk about now. In the introduction, in, if you are in Tokyo, you may not, no, in Shinjuku Kabukicho, there's a building in Tokyo Kabukicho Tower that I made a design for this. That was the uh, World War after the World War II. This is the symbol of the revitalization, redevelopment in Japan, where there was a building for the first time. It was now office in this building. And that is the image where the people gather, and the, that is the uh, very uh, terrible days, maybe, but the highlights project in Kabuchicho Shinjuku. And that is based on this. That is uh, without the, such an effort, there will be image where it was originally. Uh, fountains and so on originally there already but last year it was opened last april we have achieved more than one million people in three months a lot of young people also gather there in kabukicho and uh, people's traffic also have ch uh, changed as well in terms of regional revitalization it'd be a good trigger to change the architecture could serve a role to transform the city or town or village and including the rural uh, regional cities and areas that is the same scene using the architecture to be the uh, sort of the trigger to start some transformation in the community this is entrance it's not only the exterior designs but also the interior designs this is the where the people want to come uh, to make the venue like this this is a big theater, and this is the YA of that theater. And that is the image of that organs and so on. The other one is the much more in the rural city, in Maibashi city, 
in Guma Prefecture. This is a commercial facility. As you know, the, the glasses and the manufacturer of the glasses is called Jeans. The founder of the Jeans uh, is from Maebashi. And that is usually stage, uh, placed in the station building, but uh, but now this is near the bed town. So that is why it is not just to sell the product, but also to be uh, the place that where people surrounding its community would love it. So in the, you have the parking place and the entire site will be filled with the vehicles or the cars. But here we have the, uh, on the back side, there's a parking lot so that the, uh, we can make the space open in the gardens in the front side. Especially for the regular uh, stores, it's not very possible in this space. Every day, people may not come every day, but if it is the, uh, every morning, uh, we have the bakery uh, that will be coming every morning and where people can uh, come every morning to purchase the bread. Because when I grew, because of my experience of growing my own ch children, I want to make a store where people can also bring in their own kids. Therefore, we made a terrace where the kids can play or even can, uh, the mother can just enjoy uh, her coffee. And that is the uh, image I have for the mother and the generation of the people who are having the children have to grow the children, they become happier. So the accumulation of the small happiness to constitute the entire uh, hap uh, happiness. And that is not just the uh, this area, but this is the where a lot of the grand uh, parents, grandmothers who come to the hospitals every day. They, they also uh, grandma also come here for to, after the, their hospital visit. So also we had a expo in Dubai in 2020. There was a Dubai expo, and due to the COVID-19, it was actually held in 2021 in Dubai due to COVID-19. I was in charge of the design of Japanese pavilion in Expo 2020, Dubai. In a connected mind, connected minds and creative future, it was a theme of the expo. And the, that was very simple, but to have the connection, connectivity was very important. And that was the, uh, the two cultures, especially Islamic in the Middle East, because of the first expo in the Middle East and the, uh, and the these in Silk Road, as we maybe that the East, and then that is the arabesque, and also Japanese, and the facade was created with the Japanese traditional patterns with arabesque, and that was what they created, and this was a facade, as well as the structure, and that is a very weak, it seems like a very fragile, but it was this a system of this ball to have the shadow and the light and this is the uh, views at night it, in the middle east it is a 24-hour expo that is why the it need important to have a very good night uh, landscape that is why i created this as well next is the in osaka ex, the expo in osaka kansai the we have the women's pavilion in collaboration with cartier and cartier uh, the as you know but in the brand cartier we have the collaboration with that brand company this is a theme pavilion with the from METI and cabinet office and Japan Expo Association. These four uh, organizations work together, made a collaboration with the opportunity to having the designing for Dubai Expo and then to link between the Dubai and Osaka to be connected in the next uh, expo is called to be SDGs Expo. When I was thinking about this, I met uh, Cartier, encountered with Cartier, and Cartier was the, actually had the women's pavilion 
the themed pavilion that they have announced in the Dubai for the first time in Dubai Expo. And they wanted to uh, really verify that uh, next time. And also I want to inherit a, a Japanese pavilion. So that is why we want to have start the collaboration, especially as the Dr. Kanye, Professor Kanye has already mentioned in why Japan is not very good at. And then number five, number 12, which is the uh, gender issues and then responsibility to create as well as the responsibility to use uh, is number 12. Uh, SDGs, and that is the main collaboration we have made together. And this is the uh, in Dubai. Uh, we have the uh, in the uh, we do the dismantle it very gently and to bring it back to the uh, keep it until the next uh, expo. And the, for the inter Obayashi Gumi is the actually dismantling the structure. And then Sankyu, the transportation company, bring it to Osaka. And then so that uh, uh, they have agreed with that top theme. And that is why we had to get back the uh, uh, member facade. In Dubai Expo, and it's about third, er, three times area than Osaka Expo. So it was much, much larger area. And then we, I had the triangle. Japanese Yamato, the ratio was used of the golden type of ratio. And this was, however, in Osaka Expo, I, this women's pavilion is much uh, thinner, as you can see on the right, so that to make it to each of them, finally it has been up, created, uh, has been already started construction, 10,000 parts. Uh, all of the 10,000 parts has been controlled and managed by the QR code and doing that in the expo, uh, we did not have the reuse of the facade for the first time. The structure material we use is in the uh, building standard law that is not so much. And this is the temporary ones. And then with that explanation, then it is finally allowed in the uh, actual society hopefully that i hope that there will be more reuse examples should be shown and that would be a good idea to spread the use of reuse and then in the total co2 emissions it have been reduced by approximately 50 percent by obashigumi and the of course reuse helps a lot in that but the structured materials of the uh the the steels can be reused for the, uh, again, for the foundation to become the and concrete. And there are type of measures were made, such as a clean concrete. And that is what the women's pavilion's achievement uh, is by the having this initiative of the CO2 emission reduction. This is the reverse. And the, this is much thinner and the height is shorter but this is given longer in the next to the Japanese pavilion. And this is the uh, inside and the in Osaka uh, climate. That is the trees are brought in from Osaka. And the other one is the in the other one is the I'm engaged in the Panasonic Pavilion. That is the pavilion for the children's alpha ch generation children to show them the future. And then the draw that the drawings is the somewhat the sketch that the, has been drawn in Dubai Pavilion. It was a very big architecture, but this is the more for the children, so that the unknown shapes and that can be deformed in many different ways in the future. And that is the what is, and this is also structured materials, and this is quite quite challenging structure. And once going into Japan, definitely I want to do something more challenging. That is why I'm thinking about, and we are proceeding with this project now. And this is arch structure to be used as a butterfly, and this is the infinite shape will be used. And this is a structured model and the in total and it, to make it into the motif 
and this is what we have experimented and how, what, how much uh, what kind of lighting should be done and we have tried various type of things uh, please uh, look at the what's actually happened to these structures in the expo thank you very much and thank you Thank you very much. Uh, now, each of the speakers have talked about the, in relationship to the Expo. Thank you very much. Now, uh, as uh, Nagayama-san mentioned toward the end, uh, she is going to take on a variety of challenging uh, attempts and uh, it has come down to 50% reduction of CO2. So including these, I think we're going to see a lot and uh, learn uh, 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 the uh, solutions. And uh, SDGs are going to be uh, uh, one pillar of the uh, expo. And uh, Usumi-san, what about that? What would be the uh, factors that would promote uh, uh, the Expo in connection in, uh, with the uh, uh, SDGs? Expo is a national government event. And also, uh, recently, uh, the United Nations uh, is also involved. So uh, to think about uh, the issues, global issues. So of course, life is a theme for this one. But uh, among the SDGs, uh, we have to be, uh, well, uh, be mindful of uh, SDGs the uh, movement of people included, and uh, they're all connected with SDGs, and also participating countries are uh, involved in planning, particularly uh, I have been involved in the participation of uh, developing countries. I talked with uh, 80 countries, and as you look at uh, the, the projects of these countries, SD to SDGs and uh, global issues, they're trying to uh, put forward their vision or message so we have uh, 160 countries uh, vision two SDGs all uh, uh, shown in the same place. I think uh, uh, this is going to be unprecedented. So I think uh, this expo is going to be a very special place. Paying attention to developing countries we don't have many opportunities to do that in Japan. Uh, the, there's not much news covering developing countries, but when you think about SDGs, because uh, developing countries are behind, so how can we move ahead uh, uh, with developing countries? Or perhaps uh, the developing countries uh, might, well, uh, we use the word deepfrog toward achieving SDGs uh, because there are a lot of uh, uh, regulations that are working as in impediments to developed countries. So I think uh, there are many opportunities for developing countries. It is exactly as you say. We have a lot of uh, uh, regulations in Japan, but not uh, in terms of assistance, but uh, there has to be a partnership between Japan and developing countries. The background to this is business and also communication on a uh, uh, people to people basis. So uh, learning uh, where wisdom from each other is going to be very important. So in a way, developing countries, they don't have to force themselves to uh, develop with things as they are, they, well, they have achieved a lot of uh, savings. That has to be turned into uh, the uh, wisdom. I think that's one important aspect of SDGs, so including uh, Japanese people. Uh, well, I, I hope uh, that uh, we'll be able to learn from each other. So the host term is very important. Now, host town in Saka, for example, well, is connected with a country and uh, Sustain well, that has turned into a sustainable or uh, continuing uh, uh, relationship, but uh, we don't have many such opportunities. So, uh, uh, we have been involved with uh, that town, and uh, I'm from Mali, and uh, for three days we held a festival. But now, Africa, depending on the people, uh, well, uh, well, uh, some people uh, well, actually have met with. Uh, uh, someone from Africa for the first time. So uh, this town uh, has a well deep population, but uh, uh, well they held a, a festival for three days. At the beginning they were tense, but after three days they didn't want to part with each other. So in a way, uh, local regions become more vibrant 
And uh, this host town project, if that and this becomes a trigger, it'll be great. Looking at the Ura Horo, that's what I felt. Right. So that's being done. But on the other hand, Nagayama san, uh, you are going to, uh, you are involved in uh, building uh, pavilions. Now, with respect to women's pavilion, concept itself is going towards sustainability. In the case of Japan, for example, the uh, empowerment of women, uh, moving ahead of uh, women, or uh, respecting each other's diversity, uh, very all very important. But uh, technologically, uh, it will be very interesting, as you said, for you. How do you connect uh, SDGs and the Expo as an opportunity? The Expo is an uh, uh, arena for export, but uh, the uh, uh, construction methodology that has not been accepted yet. These uh, challenges can be attempted, attempted tried in uh, the uh, Expo uh, pavilions, and you experience it, and uh, it will be implemented in the actual society. I hope uh, the Expo will be such a, a trigger. Uh, in the case of uh, buildings, the law and legal development is very important. And there are many areas where uh, not many laws have been enacted. For example, if you want to use uh, uh, existing building for different use, there were a lot of hurdles, but uh, now we are in the age of renovation. The uh, laws are being relaxed. So uh, if you well, uh, seek opportunities, I think uh, laws even can be changed. So uh, the regulations that uh, we were not able to uh, change uh, can now be changed with uh, the Expo, right? What we are studying in the SDG uh, lab, we are thinking about uh, law and SDGs. Of course, laws are based on what happened in the past. So when you try to uh, innovate yourself, the laws tend to become uh, impediments. But uh, with uh, Expo, uh, some interesting ideas can be pursued or shown to us. Then the resistance forces uh, can be uh, eliminated as part of the uh, resistance forces. But uh, you said that the uh, pavilion in Dubai is vulnerable, but we have a lot of earthquakes here in Japan. So disassemble. The, maybe, uh, as a layman, I thought uh, one of the concepts of uh, pavilions in Japan would be uh, disassemblement, uh, how easy that can be. Now, at the beginning, when we made a proposal for Dubai, we were uh, uh, mindful of uh, uh, the need for uh, reuse. We used uh, ball joints. So, uh, so it's like uh, a plastic model. And uh, so there are two reasons for using that. One is to reuse. And uh, in uh, Dubai, I had never d done any construction, so I didn't know how skillful the uh, uh, well uh, builders are. So no matter who you are, uh, well, uh, you should be able to build it. And uh, so it's been uh, since uh, 1970, it's an uh, established system, like a plastic model, uh, model. So that's why we're able to use it. But when you do a structural calculation, well, uh, I you, well. Uh, sort of uh, Japanese laws in doing a cultural, the uh, structural calculation. And uh, it's, well, you have to do analysis. And uh, in the, uh, uh, the conditions for the structural analysis, well, uh, as I thought about uh, what member or what uh, part should be where uh, from the ground up, that kind of uh, thinking, well, you were uh, anticipating you reuse from the very beginning, like uh, that can be applied to the temporary housing after a disaster, right? Yes. Uh, when I was uh, selected as an architect for Dubai, it was not decided that the expo will be held in Osaka, Kansai. So for uh, I was thinking of uh, erecting a tent for disasters, that kind of application is very excellent uh, because uh, you might uh, 
look at something in the expo and you can learn uh, where well, you can get uh, some hints for that to be used in disasters. Right, uh, you are with uh, Sumitomo. Yes, I'm from Sumitomo uh, Forestry, but uh, uh, well, Sumitomo has a lot of uh, companies, Sumitomo companies, uh, starting uh, from uh, 400 uh, years. And uh, so we are going to establish a Sumitomo Pavilion. I talked about uh, planting trees, use them, and uh, again, replant them in this circulation, the, uh, using wood from uh, uh, the, uh, well, uh, the Shikoku. We're going to use the wood for constructing the uh, uh, <coughs> Sumitomo Pavilion. So again, uh, wood uh, can be uh, disassembled and reused, like in the case of uh, uh, all the folk house. and. Uh, Woods are also uh, recyclable uh, resources, so you plant uh, trees and how you can use that, uh, that should be filled uh, through our pavilion. And also, we have been talking about uh, the climate change. The biodiversity is being degraded these days, and that's a very big challenge. So biodiversity and uh, also nature should be filled through our pavilion. And next month, uh, details will be announced. So I shouldn't uh, well talk more about this today, but anyway, renew is uh, one key word, and trees are uh, re well renewable resources. This image of uh, recirculation is something that we want people to feel. Thank you very much. So we're looking forward to the the announcement next month, and if Sumitomo Forestry as a whole has been. Uh, uh, working so much on the SDGs, yes, indeed. And um, the responsibility to use, the responsibility to create, uh, these are the heavy responsibilities we need to work on so hard. And uh, when it comes to renewable energy, uh, that's another part, an important part. So uh, we it work so much on the forestry and the timbers. So when it comes to the residential or non-residential structures, we're trying to build them out of wood. So the key is how to cut the CO2 emission and how to conserve the biodiversity. And when it comes to that challenge, forestry and the timbers really help. So taking advantage of the domestic materials and the utilizing the globally sourced the timbers it will be at the particular area, the Sumitomo Forestry should be able to contribute a lot. Great. So when it comes to the expo, the exhibit, uh, expo, the pavilions, many of them are made of wood. Yes, it appears so. Many theme pavilions are trying to use wooden materials. And when it comes to the wooden materials, they're renewable and they should be renewed because uh, um, if we don't renew and reuse, uh, it is not going to be environmentally friendly. So in conjunction with the Expo, they pay so much attention to the use of uh, the wooden materials. And uh, many uh, foreign uh, pavilions uh, Propose the the use of the wooden materials and the women's pavilion. Well, I'm uh, one of the members of uh, the fan club, uh, fan, fan uh, club for the women's uh, pavilion. So, what is uh, done in, uh, in the pavilion uh, that relates to SDGs and the women's uh, pavilion is a space. Lots of people meet and discuss things. And I'm a curator and advisor of the pavilion. So uh, within the uh, women's pavilion, lots of activities uh, should be pursued, and uh, uh, that is uh, really helping uh, for creation of a wisdom, and uh, the societal gaps uh, need to be reduced. That is in conjunction with the SDGs. So the reversal of the historic gaps is necessary, and the, the, the awareness of the partnership uh, we're all in in uh, uh, taking the challenge of the, the global issues. So the Women's Pavilion should offer a great forum for discussing of these issues. Yes, indeed, is that what the, the Women's Pavilion is for. And the Global South Partnership will also be very important. So compared against the conventional expo, um, we will be more future-looking. 
looking more uh, more into the future. And uh, what is important about the SDGs is a measurement. A measurement with the use of the technology should be possible. So with the help of Expo, how can we get closer to achieving SDGs? And uh, during the, the Expo, uh, how can we achieve, uh, how much more can we achieve during SD, uh, the Expo? about the SDGs. It's going to be a very nice showcase of the FDG initiatives. So we have been talking about various things and it's almost the end of the, the panel three. So when it comes to the SDG focused uh, the expo and uh, today's forum, um, uh, we're going to have a major step in 2025 with the expo and achieving SDGs by 2030 may be very uh, challenging. Uh, many people say so, very, based on the various scenarios, but um, it's going to be a major sh showcase uh, for the new initiatives, uh, the transformation initiatives. So, uh, what can the Expo do for SDGs? And in order to achieve SDGs, uh, what can we do besides the, the Expo? So, well, let's uh, talk about that. Uh, Nagayama-san, please. Yes, certainly. So we're all different. Uh, uh, we're all in different positions, and we uh, take actions, uh, and uh, in terms of what we can. So um, that applies to the expo. So uh, sometimes uh, I'm not sure if um, we can achieve what we're trying to achieve. That's uh, what I felt, and. Uh, is uh, I've been increasingly sure that uh, we'll be able to achieve. Uh, achieving is uh, such a great thing, and uh, each uh, one of us uh, uh, making a uh, step by step uh, the progress that's important. Uh, creating it with the rules uh, um, uh, mounted on it uh, from the very beginning. Uh, that's a brand new idea. Yes, I heard that that was a brand new idea. So I was all the more determined that I would achieve that. So I'm still in the middle of the, the effort to do that. Now, I hope that you can uh, come see that uh, during the expo. Thank you. I wish uh, you expand on your idea. Uh, you go on. Uh, well, Oh, I didn't expect me to be the uh, next speaker. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, it's okay. So uh, um, I caught you uh, with a surprise. Well, the COVID-19, it, it came into play and the people uh, grew inversely. Well, uh, people lost uh, interactions with other people for a few years. And uh, that was true with the women as well as the youngsters say the youngsters could not take the graduation trips overseas. So the Expo should be able to offer the opportunities to feel the global community. So having an Expo in Osaka, we wish to be able to feel the global South and the whole world, and we're going to have the, the Sumitomo Pavilion, and as Nagayama-san uh, mentioned, uh, taking action is important. Feeling and uh, doing is necessary, so if somebody asks the question of, of uh, whether we can make something, uh, I tend to respond, uh, yeah, we can make it. So, uh, achieving SDGs in the Expo, and uh, eventually believing in our achievement uh, of the, the even loftier goals in the 2050. I try to believe in that and uh, take action. Thank you very much. And uh, visiting the Expo is uh, very important. And uh, the partner communities uh, should increase in numbers. The host communities should increase. So the whole uh, momentum uh, should be uh, the key. So uh, 400 or more days before the expo, I don't quite uh, feel how close it is, uh, I feel. Just the other day, I had a session about that, uh, the expo with the students, and uh, they mentioned the same thing. And the younger generation wants more engagement. They, they want 
to be part of it. So I really hope you can expand uh, that uh, engagement. So Usubi-san, what do you say about that? Yeah, I feel responsible for that. And as you mentioned, the host town is a great opportunity. So a lot of things should begin with that. And uh, with or without the subsidy, once the people get uh, to know each other, that should be at the very beginning of the, the, the happy ever after type of relationship. So a new experiment should be permitted in such a fora. And that may even influence the people in terms of their future life. So uh, back in the 1970s, um, uh, that kind of uh, initiatives were allowed. And now, why not allow that? But in Japanese uh, people now have uh, uh, a little uh, loss of the confidence. They're a bit uh, tense. And uh, I think this is a good opportunity to regain the Japanese people's uh, confidence. In the, so as we see the expo, uh, they understand uh, uh, lots of other countries, and then they should be able to understand uh, uh, Japan more. Understanding uh, the others, and then uh, un understanding uh, yourselves more. Well, uh, COVID-19 uh, facilitated a disconnection, but the reconnection uh, um, uh, should be facilitated now. And uh, empathy. And... Uh, resonance uh, resonating with one another uh, should be very important uh, everybody on the same frequency resonating that's a very important uh, and the expo uh, should offer uh, that uh, very moment uh, that very forum so japan should be reconnected with uh, lots of uh, communities uh, and uh, that should uh, trigger uh, the japanese people's uh, change in their perspectives and uh, uh, perhaps a uh, 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 half of the Mali population uh, should immigrate. What well, so the entire uh, communities, uh, not just the whole country. Uh, we, there should be more interactions, more reconnection. Yeah, the these days, the smartphones alone can connect people. So uh, people uh, should feel they're the ambassadors and uh, the host towns and uh, the the active integration and uh, active interactions and uh, migration uh, should uh, really change japan back in 1970s uh, when japan had uh, ex uh, expo that was uh, showcasing the the japan that was about to grow big and uh, japan really needs uh, to change big in the next 10 years society has been unstable and uh, the whole world has been uh, in a turmoil the climate uh, change uh, that's horrible so uh, before we move on to the sustainable society we need to showcase uh, our big endeavors otherwise uh, the the human society uh, may be endangered it may uh, come to an end so we needed a kind of a sense of a crisis then what is a showcase uh, how should it be uh, uh, taking advantage so in this sense expo is very important well three panelists members thank you very much for your contribution please give them a big hand panelist and moderator thank you very much could you please come down from the stage